Meeting General Robertson, CIC of the British forces in Japan, are military and diplomatic representatives of the occupying powers. It's Trafalgar Day, and on the plaza of the Imperial Palace, Tokyo, a full battalion of New Zealand troops is on parade. Before the march passed, General Robertson inspects the New Zealanders and the detachments of the Royal Navy and RAF that took part in the ceremony. Trafalgar Day is the 140th anniversary of Nelson's victory, and men of the Royal Navy head the march past of the New Zealand Battalion. Throughout the parade, the drill was faultless, and in the fore were the Maori platoon of the divisional cavalry. After the march passed, the battalion advances in review order. These New Zealand troops are on guard duty in Tokyo, and the Trafalgar Day Parade is an indication of the efficiency with which they're carrying out their important job. At Kaikoui, these young Maoris are doing a two-year course at the Maori Training Centre, established here by the Rehabilitation Department to serve North Auckland. Today they're working on the drawing side of carpentry. This is where natural skill shows itself clearly. Under good instructors they learn every angle of the building trade, a course that turns them out first class builders. After four months initial training, they start in on state houses at Kaikoui and complete their course in practical work. Starting at five pounds 15 a week, these lads earn as they learn. They rise to full-blown carpenters' rates at the end of their first year, and if they live away from their families, they get a separation allowance. Just how good this scheme is is shown by results. The boys have put up eight good houses and have eight more underway. Their work and training is helping to solve one of our biggest problems. For this little boy and his dog, times are tough. The streets long and the pavements hard. And like a lot of people these days, they're looking for a home. A home for Snooper the dog. He has to find somewhere to live while his master goes for a holiday. A tray isn't much use to Snooper. He's not used to what some people call luxury. It looks as if he hasn't a dog's chance of finding a home. And what's this about casuals? Snooper's never casual. Maybe he could ask someone. And that someone tells him of the SPCA pet hostel at New Lynn. It's just the place for Snooper to stay. There's good housing here for Snooper, along with 200 other dogs and a few cats, whose owners are at present unable to care for them. Saying goodbye is a sad business. But Snooper's pleased he hasn't been left to fend for himself. Maybe he'll make some new friends here. Seems a good place. You can do just what you like. A dog can take it easy for a bit. And what's all the excitement about now? Oh, yes, food. Good food coming up, too. This is a home away from home. And it looks as if uh, something's been happening around here lately. Don't look at us. We didn't have anything to do with it. The friends some people make. What's the world coming to?
It's Cup Day at Rickerton. With perfect weather, big crowds, big fields, and a good track, race goers have got all they asked for. The Totalizator is doing heavy business. Today, the election stakes are forgotten, and picking the winners from the 23 starters in the 1946 New Zealand Cup is much more exciting. Names freely mentioned are Golden Souvenir, Chang Chong, Long Sword, Signal Officer, and Thornbridge. Golden Souvenir, last year's winner, is a hot favourite in spite of carrying top weight of nine stone six. Golden Souvenir takes his last turn of the birdcage and leads the field onto the course. Now come the lighter weights, Capronella, Thornbridge and Catrick Bridge. And they're away. Hullabaloo's made a good start. Yes, and so's Chung Chong, Golden Souvenir and Lowry Bay. And so did Caithness, Western Front, Joy Giver and Royal Victor. Now they're coming round where the six furlong meets the course proper. It's Joy Giver leading from Lowry Bay and Lord Darnley. the false rail with Lowry Bay in front, followed by Joy Giver and Lord Darnley on the outside, followed by Langdor, Catrick Bridge and Hullabaloo. Now they're down past the stand the first time round and Lowry Bay is still leading. the mile and a quarter with Lowry Bay still out in front and Catrick Bridge close behind. Then come Lord Darnley, Western Front, Joy Giver, Hullabaloo and Chung Chong. Round the back and past the mile, it's Lowry Bay leading from Lord Darnley and Catrick Bridge. They're followed by Joy Giver, Pride of Mossburn and Western Front. past the turn, it's still Lowry Bay. It's still Lowry Bay out in front. Then comes Lord Darnley and Joy Giver. Now they're passing the false rail and Chung Chong puts in an appearance with Catrick Bridge on the outside and right on the outside is Lang Dor moving up fast. And Lang Dor and Catrick Bridge are fighting it out. But here comes Golden Souvenir on the outside. is holding the lead. It's Catrick Bridge with Langdor and Golden Souvenir. And this year's New Zealand Cup is over. A sensational win for the outsider, Catrick Bridge. 21-21 in the betting with Langdor and Golden Souvenir in the other places. It's a complete upset for the punters with a lucky few cashing in on one of the biggest divvies in cup history. Almost one and three quarter centuries. After the race, Mr. H.M. Glazebrook, the winning owner, receives the gold cup, valued at 100 pounds. It was no chance victory. Catrick Bridge was well up from the start and came in gamely under pressure. His jockey, J. McFarlane, rode a brilliant race, and it's a happy day for the Hastings Stables. With the New Zealand Cup goes a prize of 3,250 pounds, and Catrick Bridge has earned it all the way.